Hi everyone, welcome to my video today. My name is Mandy Witherby from Mandy's Paper Craft Creations and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Sydney, Australia. Thank you so much for being with me today. It's great to have you here. Um, thank you so much if you're watching the replay later on and thank you to those who also are watching on YouTube after I upload this video. So if you're watching on YouTube and you like what you see, please give me a thumbs up. That would be awesome. I would really appreciate that. And if you would like to subscribe to my YouTube channel, you can click on the red subscribe button below this video um, and then click on the little bell icon that's next to that and then you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. So today I um, is Thursday, I'm filming on Thursday and on Thursdays I like to do quick and easy cards. So these are great cards for people that might be new to stamping or if you just like more simplistic designs or perhaps um, you're very uh, pressed for time and you might need a project in a hurry. So these are um, great projects for you. Hi Kathleen, how are you going? Great to have you joining me. So as you're jumping on, if you're joining me live today, feel free to say hi and chat with me as I'm um, recording. It's always great to have you all here and crafting along with me as well if you would like to. Um, so while I'm waiting for everyone to jump on, I'm just going to call this up on my iPad so that I can see all of your comments there. So just give me a moment while I get that all set up. Okay. There we go. Great. So we have got comments on my iPad. Awesome. So now I can see everything. Good, good, good. So how is everyone today? We've got a beautiful sunny day here today. It's going to be hot today. They said it's going to be 31 degrees. That's Celsius for anyone who might be watching from overseas. Um, so yeah, so that's pretty warm for an October day. Today is the, what date are we today? 7th of October already. Oh my goodness. Where does the time go? <laughs> Um, so yeah, so we have got, um, uh, well, I'll quickly tell you a couple of things before we jump on into our project today. Um, so some of you may know that on Saturday just gone, we celebrated World Card Making Day. So that was a fantastic day. Um, I had a couple of events on that day, one in the morning that was open to everybody and one in the afternoon with my lovely team. And uh, we had a great day, we made lots of cards. Now we've got to make sure that we send all those cards out too. So today's, uh, this week is what we like to call World Card Sending Week. So all those cards that we made, let's get them sent out to people, share the love, let people know that we're thinking of them because that's why we do what we do, isn't it? To share it with others. So get those cards sent out. I've sent out a few already this week and I've got a few more to go still in the next couple of days. So, um, yeah, if, um, if you got to make some cards on World Card Making Day, let me know in the comments. I'd love to know about what you created. Um, oh, Kathleen is doing some Christmas cards today. Fantastic. That is so great. Hi, Amanda. How are you going? Great to have you here today. Sorry, if you see me looking down, it's because I'm reading comments. I tend not to have the comments up on my um phone screen because I can get a little bit distracted when I'm talking to you. So I have them down on my iPad and um, then when I look down that's when I can um, check them. So we have got, and I didn't have a flyer um, to show you, but we have got a brand new kit that has um, just been put out in the last uh, day or two. Oh, it might have been yesterday actually, yesterday, day before. I've lost track now. But it is called the Love Santa Tag Kit. And in the kit you get um, 12 beautiful oversized fun Christmas tags that you can, um, uh, there's stamping components to it as well. So you can um, stamp the components. Most of them are just the sentiment. One of them does have a bit of stamping on the actual tag itself. And then you can put them all together. Everything is there that you need in the kit, including ink and um, a clear block, adhesives, um, and the stamp set, of course, that comes with the kit. They're really, really fun. And um, there is also, too, uh, some Love Santa treat bags that coordinate as well if you would like to use those tags to 
to make um, treat bags or Christmas gift bags. Um, my kids, or even though they're adults, they always love to still get treats in their little, have a little Christmas um, stocking for them. It's one I actually made from cardstock. It's about that big. Probably you can't see that. It's about that big. And I always stuff it full of lollies for them every year. They love that. But these treat bags, they might get some treat bags instead this year. And I thought they might be great for the neighbours' kids as well. We've got children on either side of um, us um, with our neighbours. And I thought they might be nice little Christmas gifts to give to them as well. So I'm going to make up the tags. I'll get some of the treat bags and um, fill them with some yummies and pop the tags on and it'll be nice and fun for them. So check that out in my online store. If you're looking for my online store, you can find it two ways. You can go to my blog, which is mandyspapercraftcreations.blogspot.com. Um, at the top of the page, you'll see a shop button. You can click on that shop button to go straight through to my online store. Or you can also go to my Stampin' Up! website, which is mandywitherby.stampinup.net. And as well, there's a shop button there too. So either way, you'll find me. Um, and you can have a look at uh, that new kit. We've also got the Christmas Whimsy Kit. You might have seen me um, creating with that last Thursday. Uh, if you did, if you missed it, go back and watch it. It was pretty funny because as I was filming, we had a storm roll in and we had a blackout and I lost all my lights. I lost my internet. So my phone thankfully flicked over to um, my data, my phone data, which was good because it didn't cut out altogether. But um, yeah, it was interesting crafting in a blackout without having my lights and everything. So <laughs> check that out. But it's a really cute kit. Um, the Christmas Whimsy Kit and the um, Love Santa Tag Kit is also a cute kit. So check those out. They are awesome. Now, if you are shopping with me, this is my October host code. And I'll have that down on the desk as well when I um, tip my camera down onto the desk. But if you use this host code when you're shopping with me, for orders over $50, I will send you out a thank you gift as well. Um, every order from me receives a thank you card. And if you spend over $50, you'll also get a little thank you gift from me as well. All right. So today, as I said, we are going to... I keep on losing all of my comments. Oh, here we go. Okay, they've come back up. Oh, hey, Jill. How are you going? Great to have you here. Um, <clears throat> I have missed a few comments. I'm sorry. There's... Um, they keep disappearing on my iPad. <laughs> Hi, Angela. You're here too. Great to have you with me. And um, I already said hello to Kathleen. Yes, I'm making sure that I've said hello to everyone. If I missed you, I'm, I apologize. Having issues with these comments, but I think I've got everyone so far. All right, so as I said in my um, intro, Thursdays, uh, which is when I'm filming today, is the day that I like to do quick and easy projects. So I've got a quick and easy project for you today, and it's one that you can easily adapt to any stamp set that you have um, and any cardstock colors that you have as well. It's not using any designer series paper, but you can always step it up and add some. Um, we're just using basically stamp ink paper. We've got a couple of embellishments and we are including a punch today as well. So, oh, hi Grace, how are you? Great to have you with us all the way from New Zealand. Fantastic, thank you for joining us. Um, Amanda said trying to figure out why they disappear. Yeah, I think it's something new since Facebook made the changes recently, Amanda, um, that the comments don't stay up anymore, which is really frustrating. You have to keep tapping the screen all the time to see everybody's comments, but that's okay. Hi, Tina Marie. How are you? You're just here for a little while. That's okay. No worries. We are doing quick and easy cards today. So, all right, what I'll do is I will get the camera ready I'll tip it down onto the desktop and um, we'll get started all right so just bear with me for a moment here we go all right we'll flip those cameras and this will just be a little bit noisy and squeaky for a moment while I adjust my camera and get that set up for you over my desk all right we'll tighten everything up Get everything straight here we go all right 
I'll adjust my lights for you. Okay. Oh, I got that pretty straight. Great. I've been doing well with getting it straight lately, I have to say. <laughs> Usually when I adjust my camera, I get it so crooked. I'll just move these over for you so you can see those there. There we go. So as I said, if you would like any of the products that I show you today or the kits that I mentioned earlier or any of the other kits, we have a lot of kits to choose from at the moment. I think there's 12 kits um, at the moment and you can see all of them online in my online store. So be sure to either go via my blog or via my website. Click on the shop button. Both of those have shop buttons. Um, and remember to use my host code. All right, so the first thing I wanted to talk to you about was cardstock. So um, those of you who might be familiar with the, this is our big annual catalog. We have a couple of catalogs at the moment. We've got the annual catalog and we have a mini catalog as well. Um, but we're going to be using some annual catalog product today. Um, lately, I've been using a lot of the mini catalog product and I just feel like the annual catalog needs a little bit of love right now. So the first thing I wanted to show you in the catalogue, if you go to pages 122 and 123, this shows you the Stampin' Up! colour range. Okay, so all of the colours are broken up into colour families. So we have the Brights Collection, the Neutrals, Regals, Subtles, Basics, and then we've got our In Colours. And the In Colours, we've got two lots of In Colours, 2021 to 2023, and 2020 to 2022. You might have noticed in those in colors that they have a date range. That's because the in colors only hang around for two years. Okay, so we've got um, one that will be retiring next year and then we'll get a new one that will come in. So we always have two lots of in colors running at a time and they have like a year overlap. All of the others can be, um, you have cardstock, you have um, the classic Stampin' Pads, the ink refills for the stamp pads, and then we've got the Stampin' Blends um, in all of those, well, in all of those colours in everything except the Stampin' Blends. Some of them, some of the colours, the Stampin' Blends aren't available, and you'll see that there's just a little, um, a little line there if they don't have a code in there. That means that there's not a Stampin' Blend in those colours. But the majority of the colours, we do have the Stampin' Blends. Um, now, what I wanted to tell you about was, if you are just new getting into card making, um, you might be thinking, oh my goodness, that is a lot of colours, and where do I start? Well, we're going to be playing with cardstock today, and so I wanted to show you that if you flip over to page 126, you'll see the assortment and bundles section there. You can actually purchase each one of those colour families of cardstock um, in an assortment bundle. So what that means is for each of the colour families, so the brights, the neutrals, the regals and the subtles, you can purchase a, a pack of the assorted colours from that colour range. So you get 20 sheets and you'll get two each of the 10 colours. So that's a really great way of getting a whole heap of different coloured um, different colours of the cardstock and not having to outlay for a full packet because you might not want a full packet of um, say Mango Melody or um, Mint Macaron but by choosing the assortment pack you'll get a whole array of colours. So you can also choose an assortment pack in 12 by 12 designer series paper um, in the ink refills. Now yesterday Stampin' Up! just let us know that because of supply issues with the ink pads, um, the ink pads are only going to be available in individual colours now. They won't be available to be purchased in colour families um, for the time being. Just because of the COVID um, issues with um, supply and shipping and all of those things. So you can purchase them individually, um, but just not as a bundle for the time being. And then we've got our beautiful stamp and write markers as well, which are our water-based markers, which are in the same colors as the ink pads. And you can purchase them in the color families as well, or you can purchase them in a whole bundle all together. And then of course, we've got some other coloring tools down here as well, some soft pastels and some watercolor pencils too. 
Um, so as I said, all of the Stampin' Blends are back on the other page, but I really wanted to just focus mainly on the cardstock because that's what we're going to be using today. And we are going to be using the ink too, um, but we're just using a few colours today. All right, so that's what I wanted to highlight for you today. Now we are going to be starting off today with this gorgeous prized peony stamp set. This one's on page 73 and this is a distinctive stamp set which means that it has a lot of detail built into it which gives more of a photographic kind of look to it. So it's got all of these different shading and what we call opacity built into the stamp so it gives you a lot of detail in the stamp which is beautiful. So we're going to be playing with that one today. I've pulled out a few others if we get time as well but we'll see how we go. All right. So the card, here's the stamp set here. Um, it is a red rubber stamp and the images on the front are only shown at 90%. That's just so they can fit all the imagery on the front of the stamp case. But the stamps are um, bigger than what you see on the front. So you'll see here, this is the, um, the large floral one here that we're going to be using today. And we are going to be using the little one here too. But this is going to be our focal image. But you can see that it's actually a bit bigger than this, the image on the front cover. So these are a red rubber stamp. We call them a cling stamp. They come with um, stickers that we can adhere to the um, backs of the foam there. So they've got the foam built into them. And we put the stickers on there so that we can see where we're going to line up our stamp when we're stamping. So they're really easy to put together. Um, there's instructions inside the cover to show you how to apply your stickers to your stamps. So don't be too worried. And just to let you know, each of the stickers are actually in the shape of the stamp. So you can't get them wrong. Each stamp is going to be in a different shape. And the sticker is already um, pre-cut to that shape for you. So they're really easy to apply to your stamps. So you just follow the instructions on the inside as to how to apply your, your um, stickers to your stamps. And then you'll be able to line them up when you stamp. Okay. Um, all right. So let me show you what we are going to be creating today. We are just creating this really simple but elegant card today and using a colour that I don't use very often, which is our soft sea foam. It's a really, really pretty soft colour, but it's just not one that I pull out very often. I don't know why I don't, because it's really pretty. And we're just teaming that up with some Sahara sand and we've got our basic white. So just three easy colours um, to use together. So, um, oh, hi, Nola, you're here. Great to have you here with us. Hi, Christy. Um, I'm just having a look to see if I have missed any comments. Wow, everyone is jumping on. Okay. Oh, thank you so much, Christy. Yeah, just a really simple, um, easy design. And as I said uh, at the beginning, this is one that you can create really easy layout to create with any of your stamps in your collection that you have really really easy and you'll see i've got some very faint um almost like a watermark look of the small flowers in the background here as well so hopefully you can see that on the camera so i'll show you how to put this one together now for those of you who might be new to stamping um, or card making. I'm going to do this right from the um, start. Normally I have all of my pieces pre-cut for you, but I am going to show you how to cut the pieces down today because it occurred to me that some people might not really know how to cut their cardstock. So the first thing that we do need, of course, is our paper trimmer. And I just realized I had a little bit of a scrap still sitting in my paper trimmer. So our fantastic Stampin' Up! paper trimmer is really great it's a great cutting tool um, we have measurements in centimeters and in inches we've got a um, track here for our cutting blade to run along now it comes with a cutting blade which you can get replacement blades as well if because they do go blunt over time and we also have a scoring blade as well or a scoring tool on here. So I usually use, leave my scoring tool up at the top because it doesn't get as much use as my cutting blade. Down on the arm here as well, um, this is the replacement arm 
that you can purchase. The one that comes with the um, tool is actually in inches, but there is a centimetre one that you can purchase separately if you like to use the measurements along the arm as well. Not everybody uses the measurements along the arm, but some do. So I just purchased the um, additional arm that had the centimetres. It has an extension arm here. So it goes all the way out to just over 43 and a half centimeters which is 17 about 17 and a quarter inches so if you are a scrapbooker and you're measuring long pieces or even if you're a card maker and you're doing um, uh, portrait style um, cuts on your cards you've got this extension arm here as well and that just tucks away you got a little hook up here too that you can hang it if you want to hang it, if you like to hang your tools, um, which can be really handy. And as you saw before, the arm on this one does come up so that you can um, get your cardstock out. This is your cutting track here and it is important to keep your cutting track clean. Mine actually needs a bit of a clean out at the moment. And the best way to do that is to grab a scrap of cardstock, which I had a moment ago. Um... I've got some paper here. We'll do it with a piece of paper. I'll just fold the paper in half because it's a little bit thinner. And you just run a piece of cardstock down the track. And it'll pick up all of that gunk out of the track of your um, trimmer. As you can see here, it collects um, bits of cardstock and bits of fluff in the track. And if it gets too mucky in there, it can actually affect how your blade will run through the track. And that can affect how it cuts. So it's good to give it a clean. Mine hasn't had a clean for a little while. Um, it's in need of a good clean. Um, so that's our paper trimmer. Now, our cardstock comes in A4 sheets. Oh, I actually didn't pull one out of the white. Just a moment, I'll grab another white. I've just opened a brand new packet of basic white this morning, actually. So our cardstock comes in A4 um, cardstock it also does come in 12 by 12 card uh, size as well um, but the a4 is for australia and europe i believe america has a different size america and canada they use um, imperial measurements so their cardstock is actually a different size to ours it's what's called letter size but we use a4 um, so I'm going to show you how to cut your cardstock down. So this is a piece of A4. Now I always like to start by cutting my cardstock in half. Now half of an A4 sheet, if you want it exactly, it's 14.85. So that means we're going to 14.85 um, on our um measure here which is halfway between 14.8 and 14.9 so we'll go 14.85 and then i'm taking the blade down to the bottom we've got a little um edge here that we can line our cardstock up with and it helps to hold it nice and straight and then i cut towards that edge so that my paper doesn't slip okay so now I've actually got two pieces of cardstock that could be card bases because now they are the exact size that I need for a card base. Now you can score that in half. You can just fold it if you want to. I like to always score it. I find I get a nicer um, fold when I score it. So I'll take this to now um, 10 and a half because now this, this piece is 21 centimetres by 14.85. So I'll take that to 10 and a half, which is halfway. And this time I'm going to use my scoring tool and I'm going to run that over the cardstock a couple of times. And hopefully you'll see that there is a score mark there on the paper. So when you're scoring, it, it pushes the cardstock down so it creates a valley. You want to fold away from the valley. So the other side of the card, we call that the mountain fold because it, it sits up where we've scored it. So we want that mountain fold to be on the inside. And then we can fold our cardstock. Okay. Now what I like to do after I've folded my cardstock is I like to what we call burnish with a bone folder. So the bone folder can be found in the tool section towards the back of the catalogue, the annual catalogue that I showed you. And I like to run that along 
the folded line there which helps the cardstock just gives you a nice crisp fold and it helps the cardstock to sit down as well so a bit nicer so what I do with the other piece usually the other half so now I've got a card base ready to go ready to create with what I do with the other half is you can leave it ready to go if you like but I always like to have um, card front pieces ready for um, stamping on or cutting down smaller and things like that so usually when I cut a piece of cardstock in half one half I'll keep as a base the other half I'll cut down again so this time I'm going to measure at ten and a half again but instead of scoring I'm actually going to cut so now I've got two pieces that are a card front size so here's my folded piece if I put this on top of there you'll see that it's the same size as the front of that card so that's that's why I call it a card front size so now I've got two workable pieces so I always have card front sizes cut ready to go so I can just pull them out um, and create with them all right so that's that's the basis of how to cut your cardstock to um, get started now I have a piece already cut of our soft sea foam which is the one that we're going to be using today but I haven't scored it yet so we'll score that now. So I'm going to take that to 10 and a half or 10.5 and score that with my scoring blade. Remember it's the light colour blade that is your scoring blade and then I'm going to fold that in half. And I'll burnish that with my bone folder now if you don't have a bone folder but you have one of our clear um, stamp blocks you can always use the edge of your stamp block to run along the edge of your cardstock just make sure that whatever you are running along the edge of that cardstock is clean okay so because you don't want any ink coming off onto that um, you can push with your finger as well or use the back of your nail to run along the edge as well just I find that that doesn't feel very nice on my finger so I prefer to use my bone folder <laughs> so they're just some other ideas if you don't have a bone folder all right oh hi Debbie how are you from New Hampshire great to have you with us just saw that you had popped on there snuck in the back door <laughs> all right so that's that's our card base for today now the next thing that we need is a piece of Sahara sand now I have um, a piece of Sahara sand here that I've got cut in half from an A4 sheet. So I'll cut that down again into my workable card front size. Okay, I'll save this one for another project. And then with this one, now what we're going to do is I still want that width of the 10.5, but I'm going to cut this down to 7.2 centimetres. Okay, so I already know that is 10.5. So I'm going to turn it this way and I'm going to cut this at 7.2 centimetres. There we go. All right, so the piece that is off to the side is the piece that I'm going to put away for later. And the piece that is still here is the piece that I've just measured at 7.2. And that's the one that we're going to use. So now it's 7.2 by 10.5 and now we need a piece of white so I'll get that white that I had before my card front size and this time um, I need a piece that is 6.8 by 10.1 so I'm going to do the 6.8 cut first so we'll go to 6.8 which is there on my trimmer all right that's the excess piece we'll put that to the side and then we're going to trim this down to 10.1 so it was 10.5 remember from when we trimmed it down so we're just going to take a little bit off that so we're going to 10.1 okay so there are our pieces for our um, layout and then we're going to need a piece for or a couple of pieces actually for our tag so from those two pieces that we just cut down, the Sahara sand and the basic white, we're now going to use those to create our little um, sentiment tag or our sentiment um, layers. 
So we are going to um, cut a piece. Oops, we're going to do the Sahara sand first. And we're going to cut that at three quarters of an inch. Now this time, what I'm going to do, well actually I can do it the same way. You can either, it's on, if I close, well, I'll actually I'll open that up to show you. Um, if you have a look on your trimmer here, usually we measure on this side of the, the cutting um, track. But you do have some measurements up to just over three and a half, three and a half centimeter. It actually goes up to 3.7 centimeters on the opposite side of the track as well. So depending on if you're just cutting a small piece. So for instance, I'm going to cut a little skinny piece for my label. This time I'm going to use the um, measurements on this side. And the reason for that is because You've got a longer piece here where you can hold your cardstock. So that little edge along there keeps your cardstock in place a bit better. On this side, you've only got a little bit just here. Okay, it's a little bit hard to see that on camera. Let's see if I turn it a bit that way. So you've got that little bit of an edge there. But on this side, you've got all of that edge there just to hold your cardstock up against so that it won't slip. But on this side, you've only got a little bit. So often if I'm cutting a smaller piece, I'll go the other side so that I can use, I can utilize this side. I'll show you. So we're going to cut, oops, we're going to do the Sahara sand first, weren't we? We're going to cut the Sahara sand at three quarters of an inch. Now this time, instead of centimeters, I'm flicking over two inches. Three quarters of an inch is two, uh, 1.9 centimeters, if you want to use centimeters. And I've got that lined up there. But see now how I've got the cardstock lined up against this edge here. That's just helping me to hold the cardstock in place. And that's why I'm using the measurement over here. If that's too confusing, you can use the measurement on this side too. Um, you just have to make sure that you hold your cardstock really nice and still. And you do have the lines on here as well that you can line it up and make sure that it's straight. All right, so that's one part of our... Um, sentiment label. Now we'll take that other piece of um, basic white and we're going to cut half an inch which is 1.2 1 1 1.25 is half an inch. 1.25 centimeters or half an inch. There we go. Now you might wonder why I, I um, changed from centimeters to inches then when I was doing that measurement. That is because we are using our lovely labels picker punch. Now the picker punches, we've got three different picker punches in the series. Um, so you can choose, I'll just close that so that I can show you. You can choose any of these that you like. Let me lay them down here to show you. These are great punches for your sentiment labels. Um, each one of the picker punches has got little tracks for, um, helping to use as a guide on your punches so that your cardstock feeds in really nice and straight into your punch to punch the ends of your um, sentiment label. So you've got three different sizes for each one of those um, punches and in each punch there's two punches or two shapes. So you can make six different tags in each of those punches. So put them all together and you've got 18, is that right? 18? Yes, three sixes are 18. You've got 18 different labels that you can create um, with those three punches. So each of the little tracks in these punches um, uh, measure half an inch, three quarters of an inch and one inch. So you've got different measurements, which is why I switched over to inches when I was cutting these. So of course you can convert that to centimeters. But because I'm using the punch, it's just easier to use the, the um, inch measurement. So I'm going to be using the lovely labels pick a punch today. We've also got the treasured tags and the banner. Okay, I'll just pop the other two away. On the underside of our punch, you'll see this is where the punch mechanism is. But we also have a locking button here as well. This just slides so that um, when you're storing your punches, you can lock it and store them flat. And then when you're using it, you unlock it 
to spring that open so that you can punch your cardstock. All right, I'm going to use the scalloped end this time and I'll start with my basic white. So I'm popping it in the track like so. I'm going to push it all the way in. Now these pieces each are 10 and a half centimeters long because I was using that piece that I cut down earlier, which we, we did that first cut at 10 and a half centimeters. So I'm pushing that all the way in. And if I flip that over, you'll see that cardstock goes all the way to the edge there. It's, there's like a bit of a, a stopper sort of at the end there. Okay, so you go all the way into the edge and then punch and you get that beautiful little scalloped end. So I'll do the same with my three quarters of an inch piece and this time I'm using the next size up. So I'm using that track, pushing that all the way into the end and punch and there we go. And you'll see if I lay them on top of each other, because we've punched different sizes, you'll see that this one's got more of a detailed border than this one. But see how they still coordinate beautifully together? Okay, so as I said, they were both 10 centimeters long, or 10 and a half centimeters long to begin with. We're going to trim them down um, after we've stamped on them. All right, so well, let's pop the punch away. Oops, actually, I'll leave that out over here in case we need it again. All right, so they are all the pieces that we need for our card okay in our cardstock so we've got soft sea foam sahara sand and basic white okay so let's start with our stamping first i'm going to bring in a little piece of grid paper this is our mini grid paper i'm just going to use that to protect my surface while i stamp i'm going to do a little bit of tone on tone stamping um, this gives a bit of a watermark effect on your cardstock. So I'm going to use the Soft Sea Foam ink or classic Stampin' Pad with um, straight onto the Soft Sea Foam cardstock. So I'm going to use that little small flower here in the Prize Peony stamp set. And I'm just going to ink that up. So I'm just going tap, tap, tap on my stamp pad. Sorry, I'll move that over a little bit. Tap, tap, tap. And I'm just gonna stamp some of these flowers randomly in the background here. Just twisting them different directions so that they're not all exactly the same. There we go. Okay, so that's all we need to do with that one. So we'll close that one up. So can you see how we've just got those really soft little flowers in the background there, almost like a watermark effect. So aren't they pretty? Okay, so that's the first step. We're going to clean our stamp. I'm going to use the um, Simply Chamois. I know it looks gross. Um, they come... Um, looking like this when you first get them nice and clean although that one's got a bit of staining on it too but as you use them over time they do get a little bit stained but that's okay um, so long as you rinse it out every week or every few days depending on how much you're using it and um, rinse out all that excess ink then they will still do a really good job even though they're stained they still do a really good job of cleaning your stamps Always a good idea to clean your stamps straight away. Yesterday I made a mistake and I didn't clean my um, stamp straight away and I'd used a very deep pigment ink and um, it left it with a bit of um, staining on it because I left it sit for hours without cleaning it and um, I had to get out my stamp and scrub and my um, stamp and mist and I was scrub, 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 scrubbing it and I still didn't get it all off. So. Yes, so I um, broke one of my own rules yesterday and I didn't clean it straight away. So I'm always telling everyone to clean their stamp straight away because I was going to go back to it, but I got waylaid with other things and I didn't get back to it. So, all right, so now we're going to take that piece of basic white that we cut before. So this is the piece that is 6.8 by 10.1 and we're going to stamp this big flower. So it's this one here. We're stamping this big flower onto this piece using Sahara Sand Classic Stampin' Pad. So this time, because the stamp is bigger than the stamp pad, 
I'm going to take my ink to the stamp pad. So I'm just turning that upside down and tap, tap, tapping on the top of my stamp. Okay, then we're just going to stamp this onto this piece of basic white. Now it is going to go off the edges a little bit, but that's okay. We've got our um, paper underneath. I'm going to stamp it more up towards the top and leave a little bit of a gap at the bottom. So give that a nice firm press, but being careful not to rock your stamp. Okay, there we go. And see, we just went off the edges a little bit, but that's okay. Isn't that a beautiful stamp? So gorgeous. And can you see all the shadows and shading in there? That's the distinctive stamp. So pretty, isn't it? All right, so I like to stamp off the excess ink first before, oh, I didn't get too much excess ink this time actually, before cleaning my stamp on my chamois. That just helps alleviate a bit of that uh, staining on our chamois. There we go. All right, and while we've got our Sahara sand ink out, we'll stamp our sentiment. So I'll just pop this one to the side for a moment to dry. Now the sentiment, I wanted a long sentiment. But the sentiments in um, this stamp set, they were sort of wider and they weren't going to fit on the sentiment label. So I pulled out some other stamp sets and I found a long stamp, a long image in um, this one. This is the All Things Fabulous stamp set. And I liked this one here, Wishing You All Things Fabulous, because that's a really great sentiment I thought that you can use for lots of things. Um, even just to send a card just because. Um, you can use it for a birthday card. You can use it for lots of different things for th if you're just sending one a card to someone, um, a thinking of you type card. I just thought it was a great all-round sort of sentiment and it was the right size for what I needed. So I chose that one. But we do have a lot of other stamp sets as well that we have um, long sentiments. I pulled out the Timeless Tropical as well because I thought Our Friendship is Timeless was another nice one that would have been great. Um, then we had, I pulled out Ornate Thanks because there's lots of long sentiments in there that I thought would be great too. Um, you made my day, just wanted to say, um, from the bottom of my heart, you're amazing. So there's lots of different ones that you can choose. And then we've also got this one too, Through It Together. And this one's got a lot of long sentiments on it as well. So there's plenty to choose from. Um, so I'm just actually thinking maybe we should change. Maybe we should change this one and do a different sentiment. Um, what about this one? You are capable of great things. That's a great one as well. Um, believe in yourself. That's a great one. I liked, which one was it? Just wanted to say. Just wanted to say, let's see if that one would fit. Maybe we'll, we'll change it up. We'll do this one with a different sentiment. Because why not? Um, where is it? Let's see. I just have to find it now. Just wanted to say, there it is. That one should fit perfectly. Oh, so this is a photopolymer stamp set. You might notice it looks different to the one that I'm using. Um, the photopolymer is a um, flexible material that is um, see-through so it does make it easy to line or easier to line up when you're stamping sentiments let's just check to see if that's going to fit on our label oh that'll be perfect all right let's do that one this time we'll do it a little bit different I'll just gra grab another block all right, and I'll just pick that up with my block. There we go. So I don't know if I've used this one before. I might give this one a little clean. With the photopolymer stamps, it's always a good idea to give them a bit of a clean before you use them. They do tend to hold a little bit of manufacturing oil on them, and sometimes they don't hold the ink as well first time you use them. So it's a good idea to give them a bit of a clean um, the first time. And then just make sure they're nice and dry. All right, there we go. Okay, so let's just ink that up. I'll just test that first on my paper. Beautiful, gorgeous. Now I'm gonna stamp it um, towards the right-hand end. I've got the scallop on the right-hand end and I'm gonna stamp it a little bit towards the right-hand end because I'm going to put some embellishments on the left-hand end. 
Ah, oh, beautiful. That was a good one to choose. Yay. Just wanted to say. All right. And it's this is actually a nice, delicate um, font as well, which goes really beautifully with the um, card, with the design of the card. All right. So that's all the stamping that we had to do. Wasn't that easy? So we just did the sentiment and the flower and um, that's all the stamping done. All right, so now we're going to mount all of these pieces up together. So basically what that means is we're just going to stick them all together. So let's start first of all with our flower. I'm just going to turn that over upside down and we're going to add some adhesive to the back. Now we've got a couple of different adhesives um, that you could use. We've got multi-purpose liquid glue, which is just, as it says, it's a liquid glue and it's um, we can use this for lots of different um, things, lots of different ways of adhering things. We've got um, what we call stamp and seal, and we do have stamp and seal plus as well, which is a stronger tape, but my stamp and seal plus is empty, and I was just waiting for my order to come so that I can refill this one. This one's about to run out as well, I can tell. Um, so... Yeah, I can see that that one's probably going to run out while I'm using it, actually. And then we've also got our double-sided tape, which we call um, Stamp and Seal. So this is just double-sided tape. Um, it has a paper cover on one side. It's sticky on the other side. So you adhere that down and then you remove the um, paper. In fact, we'll probably end up using that because I think my Stamp and Seal is going to run out. But we'll start with the Stamp and Seal. So we'll get this running. We'll see how far we get with this before it runs out. Because I can see that red line is approaching. You know the red line when you get to the end? Of, yep, there we go. It just ran out. <laughs> okay. We'll finish off with our tear and tape. So at least I get to show you a couple of different adhesives today. So with the tear and tape, you just lay that down where you want it. Now you can tear it. Or you can cut it. I'm usually a tape cutter, not so much a tape tearer, but it does tear really easily if um, if you want to tear it. All right, so now I've got adhesive on all four sides there. I'll just remove the backing paper from the um, tear and tape. So see now the backing paper comes off and now that is um, sticky. So we're just going to line this up with a little border of two millimeters all the way around the edges. And just line that up, line it up as straight as you can. I don't always get mine perfectly straight, but that's okay. It's a handmade card. It doesn't matter. All right, and now with my sentiment label, um, I'll show you how to use the uh, multi-purpose liquid glue as well. Why not? Let's use everything today. So usually if I do that, I like to have something underneath just so I don't get glue on my desk because this glue is very sticky glue. So I'm just going to use a bit of this multi-purpose liquid glue. Now it comes out quite fast, so you don't want to push, uh, you don't want to squeeze it too hard and you don't want to put it right the way to the edges either because as you squish it down, if you're used to any, used to using any um, liquid glue, you know that as you push it down, it will sort of spread out and you don't want to push it too hard and have it oozing everywhere. Whoa, there we go. Now, the good thing about using the uh, multi-purpose liquid glue is it gives you time to position your piece because it doesn't dry super quickly. So if you need to wriggle your piece around, or what we call wiggle time, you can um, wiggle your piece around to line it up. So there we go. Okay, so now what we're going to do, that little piece that's overhanging, we're going to flip that over upside down. We're just going to trim that off. There we go. And there we've got our sentiment label. Okay, so there's our pieces already all um, mounted up. Now we're gonna put them onto our card. So with this piece first, with the flower, we're gonna flip that over. I'll use my tear and tape. This time I will get my um, tape scissors. Um, where are my tape scissors? I've got so many pairs of scissors over here. Here we go. These are my old ones that are getting blunt. So I keep these ones for just my tape now. And I have another pair of good scissors that I use for cutting my ribbons and my cardstock. Some people have lots of pairs of scissors for cutting lots of different types of materials. I usually just have two, one for tape and one for everything else. There we go. 
sorry if I'm missing any comments let me see where are we up to we are oh Christy said that's a great sentiment too thanks Christy yeah they're all really great aren't they it's lots and lots to choose from oh Rose is here too hi Rose how are you going great to have you with us today and Laurie's here as well hi Laurie how are you going great to have you with us all right, so with the double-sided tape or what we call tear and tape, we just remove those um, paper backings to reveal our adhesive. Hi, Robin, how are you going? Great to have you here. That's okay that you're a little bit late. The replay is always available. All right, so now we're going to pop this down over to the side. Now, I'm, you can place it wherever you like. I've just left, you know what, I didn't even measure. I just sort of was using my eye and thought, oh, yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, you can just pop that down. We're just adhering that flat. I'll measure it just to let you know how far I've put it in. It's just under one and a half centimetres. It's about one, and let's go that side. I can read that one better without my glasses on. It's about 1.2 centimetres in from the edge. Let's have a look on our original card. Um... Yeah, about 1.3, 1.2, thereabouts. It doesn't have to be exact. All right, now with our sentiment label, we're going to um, put some dimensionals on the back of that. So Stampin' Dimensionals, these are our Stampin' Dimensionals. They are self-adhesive self -adhesive foam mounts. You get three sheets in the packet. Um, does it tell me? Yeah, it's a total of 300 dimensionals in the packet. So I've already pulled out a sheet. They come in um, hexagon shapes and I'll show you how to use those in a moment. We do also have mini Stampin' Dimensionals as well, which are much smaller, which are great for if you're working with um, smaller pieces, smaller images, smaller embellishments. Um, they're great as well. All right, so we're just going to take those out. We're going to, I'm going to sort of work out where I'm going to pop my sentiment and I'm going to put down the dimensionals on the back there like so. So I'm going to use three and I'm going to have them so that where the dimensionals are sitting, it's going to be sitting on this white cardstock here. Okay, so again, these like our double-sided tape, these are um, double-sided adhesive as well. So I'm just now going to remove the um, paper backing from the dimensional and then I'll flip that over and we're just going to pop that along um, the bottom here of our um, focal image. But we're going to line up the edge here with the edge of our card. So we'll line that right up against the edge. I've just left a little white gap at the bottom as you can see there just for an added little border. And we'll pop that down there. And what happens with the um, dimensional is, as the name says, it just gives you a bit of um, dimension to your card and a bit of interest. It just helps to pop that sentiment up. Now, you might think, wow, that looks really plain and boring, but we haven't finished yet. We need to now add our ribbon and bling. All right, so now with the ribbon, we don't have any ribbon in the color of the soft sea foam. Um, and that was the color that I wanted to use. We do have, however, a couple of white ribbons. So I've got, oh, they've all come off the roll. Like threw them over um, on my desk. Well, I didn't actually throw them, I placed them, but they, they've come unraveled. So we've got a couple of ribbons that we can choose from and we're gonna color this today. So I'm gonna use some of our Stampin' Blends um, alcohol markers to color this ribbon. Um, so we've got two different ribbons here um, that we can choose from. We have got the glittered organdy ribbon, which is in the white, which has got this beautiful sparkle through it. And then we've also got the crinkle seam binding ribbon, which I love this ribbon. I use this a lot and it is so soft and it takes up the color beautifully when you um, color this ribbon. Um, and the fact that it's crinkled, it doesn't matter if you tie a bow and then have to untie it again and then tie it again um, because it's already got the crinkle built into it. So it doesn't matter if you crinkle it a bit more. Whereas some of the other ribbons, if you tie it and you don't get your bow quite right and then you've got to undo it, then you've crinkled your ribbon and you think, oh no. So 
Yeah, so I think we'll probably go with the crinkle seam binding ribbon, which is the one that I used on the original card as well. Now you'll notice that I did have my sentiment offset a little bit to the right hand side, and that's because we're going to put some bling over here. Okay, so let me show you how to color your ribbon. So I'm going to use one of those Stampin' Blends that I talked about at the beginning. Um, one thing I didn't mention when I talked about the Stampin' Blends is when you get them, they come in a color combo. So when you purchase the color, they will come in a light and a dark color. And they come together as a set like that in the light and the dark color. All right, so we've got dark soft sea foam and light soft sea foam. Now the soft sea foam is such a soft color. Um, I'm going to use the dark color to color the ribbon today. And I think um, we're going to use the um, seam binding ribbon. Now I've got a piece that I had already cut there. Just um, That was just an off cut piece. So I thought, well, let's use that up. I'll bring in my grid paper just to protect my surface. And we'll do a bit of coloring of this ribbon. Now because this these markers are um, an alcohol-based marker. The ink does dry really quickly with these. So um, they are great for coloring your ribbons. They're also great for coloring any non-porous surface. So any of your embellishments you can color. Um, and of course, they are also great for coloring in our, um, coloring in our stamped images as well. And you can blend color with them. You can get different tone. You can um, get light and dark shades in the single color or you can blend different colors together. So there's lots and lots of things that you can do with um, the Stampin' Blends, but I love coloring ribbon with it. Now it might be hard to see on camera because it is such a soft color, but it does make a difference from having a white ribbon to having a, um, a colored ribbon. And obviously, the more you lay down the color, the darker it will become, as with coloring with anything really, isn't it? There we go. We'll see if we've got enough colored now. Um, so usually, we'll let that dry for a few minutes um, because obviously, you want that ink to dry. Now, it's interesting because when the Stampin' Blend dries, it causes the ribbon to go a bit stiff, but I'll show you a trick with that in a minute that to soften that ribbon back up. Let's pop that to the side for a moment and let that dry and we'll add our bling while we're waiting for that to dry. I thought that I would use um, some champagne rhinestone basic jewels because I thought that the colour went really well with the colour of the Sahara sand. Now we, um, oh my, that's okay, my iPad had frozen there for a moment. Um, so let's just hang on two secs. Um, all right. So I thought these would go really well. So let's open up the packet. And of course we Stampin' Up! has so many different embellishments to choose from. So many beautiful ones. Um, that any of them would look gorgeous. Pearls would look beautiful as well. In fact, you could color pearls. Oh, you know what? Let's try that. While we are here and we have time, let's color some pearls and we'll see how that looks. So of course we have our, this is, you can see here, these are some of my embellishments. This is only one container. I have several containers, but these are the ones that I use the most. And so these are in, um, my most used container, but you can see we've got all these different ones. Now, where are my pearls? There's my pearls. I've still got an old packet of pearls. Still using them up. That's okay. All right, so we'll pop all those other ones to the side. And let's try colouring some pearls with our dark soft sea foam as well. And we'll see what colour we achieve. I'm not sure if they're going to be dark enough. We might still need to use the... Um, the champagne rhinestones, but we'll pop those over to the side for the moment. Um, we might do a dark, a larger one and some small ones. There we go. All right, you can see I've already colored some here before too in different colors, but let's try with the soft sea foam and see what color we can achieve. As I said, it's a very light color, so we might not make too much of a difference on the pearl. I don't think it's going to make much of a difference on there actually. No, it doesn't make too much difference on the pearl. 
because the soft sea foam is so light in color as it is what if we try um let's see what if we try sahara sand just move that um let me see what have we got over here we've got crumb cake crumb cake and i think this one is oh we've got ivory and bronze I actually I'm not sure if we have one in so in um Sahara sand. Let me check in my in my catalog here and see. Uh let's see. Sahara sand. Okay, so there's no stamp and blend in Sahara sand, but we do have crumb cake and soft suede. So crumb cake would be the next closest colour. So I've got the light crumb cake here the ivory and the dark crumb cake let's try the light crumb cake see how that looks okay not much difference there let's try the dark crumb cake go over the top of that oh that's pretty okay so that just gives a little bit of a it's not quite dry yet but see it gives sort of almost like a goldy tone to the pearl can you see the difference between the ordinary pearls and that one i wonder what that color would look like on here let's try that and see i don't know if that's quite dry yet it does dry pretty quickly but i'll just be careful picking that up to see if i make sure i don't smudge that color what would that look like on there oh that would look nice on there actually wouldn't it Maybe we should use these ones this time. Let's try that. We'll color them ourselves. Now, of course, if you don't have um, stamp and blends, if you're new to paper crafting, that's totally okay. You can use um, just some basic rhinestones or as I showed you before, the champagne rhinestones, which are already um, colored for you. Um, you can certainly use those as well. Um, but yeah, I just thought this was a, another idea that if you wanted to step it up and you wanted to try something different, you could get a couple of Stampin' Blends and um, colour your embellishments yourself. So there we go. So we've got a few. They have come up quite goldy looking, haven't they? Which looks really nice, actually. So there you go. You can make your own gold pearls. So we'll pop this one down here. There we go, and we'll pop this other one up here in the top corner, up there. There. Beautiful. All right, so there we go. So we've got some coloured pearls there. Now we'll go back to our ribbon. So, all right, so there's our ribbon has, um, the colour has dried now on that. And you'll see that it's gone a little bit stiff. So this end is really soft. This end is a little bit stiff. To soften that up, all you need to do is to grab your bone folder and run that between run the ribbon between your bone folder and your thumb a couple of times and it just softens those fibers up again in your ribbon and now you can see now it's become all floppy again so nice and easy all right so we're going to tie a bow with this ribbon Okay, it's always challenging tying bows on camera and I think I haven't colored quite enough ribbon actually. I think I'm going to have to make that a little bit, um, color a little bit more. What I might do is I'll tie the bow first so I work out how much ribbon I need and then we'll color the extra part of the bow that we need. So we probably need about, about that much. We'll cut that there. Oh, make sure I pick up the my sharp scissors there we go all right so we'll just undo that again and as I said it doesn't matter with this ribbon because it's already got the crinkle built into it and I'll grab my dark soft sea foam again and we'll just color the end of that ribbon so there we go so who else colors their ribbon do you all do you all color your ribbon like this I love that we can do that. And did you know too that some of our lighter colour ribbons that we have, 
you can actually color them in the same color um, family so for instance if you have a light blue ribbon say it's a pool party I think we have got some that are pool party um, you can color it with any of the other blue blends to um, yeah so that you can match it then to your project um, we've got some light green ribbons that you can color in in a darker green especially great too if you're um, doing your Christmas cards Pink ribbons can be coloured with um, red Stampin' Blends. So, yeah, so don't think just because you've got a coloured ribbon or a pre-coloured ribbon that you can't add colour to it because you can and then you can change the colour. So there we go. Whoops. All right. Now, normally, as I said, I would let that dry and... Um, We'd let that dry and then we'd, we'd soften it up a little bit. Let's give it a little flap in the wind and see if we can um, get it to dry a bit quicker while we're doing that. So as I'm doing that, let me tell you quickly about um, my team. So I've got some of my team members on here watching today, actually, which is lovely. It's always lovely to have my, my team along as well. And um, we have a team of beautiful, beautiful um, people who have developed such wonderful friendships and we have such a lovely positive community in our team and um, I really love spending time with my team we have a lot of fun together we creatively inspire each other um, I run little creative challenges each month as well for my team so I'm just tying this bow now as I'm talking to you I run little creative challenges each month and then I give um, I draw a prize at the end of the month for um, the winner and, or I draw a name for a prize and um, yeah and it's really fun but then we've got lots of um, inspiration going into the group all of the time as well with everybody sharing their projects and and they share other projects as well not just not ones that are just for the challenge but um, other projects as well so it's always great to get lots of ideas from each other and generally just have a great time we have a, a monthly catch-up together which we call a team gathering and um, and we have a bit of creative time together as well and um, from time to time we have additional catches catch-ups through the the month as well and um, yeah and, and we just have a really beautiful community and it's lovely that everybody is just um, so friendly and all so passionate about card making and paper craft in general um, just like I am, which is fantastic. <laughs> it's great to have a community of like-minded people. Um, if you are interested in joining our community and becoming part of our team, please reach out to me and let me know because I'd love to give you more information about that. Um, and when you do join with Stampin' Up, um, you purchase the starter kit for only $169 but you get to put $235 worth of product into that starter kit of your own choice. It's not a pre-designated um, starter kit. So I'm just gonna pick up the glue dot here. As you'll see, I'm using mini glue dots. These little glue dots are just on the roll here. So I'm just gonna pick them up. Yeah, so when you purchase the starter kit, um, you end up getting $66 worth of product for free because you're only paying $169. And then on top of that, you also get free shipping on that starter kit. And then not only do you join a fabulous community of um, crafty people, beautiful crafty people who are also lovely, but you also then get an ongoing 20% discount on all your Stampin' Up! products, which is fantastic. And we all love a discount, don't we? So there we go. There is our little card all finished. So anyway, talking about... Um, the team if you would like more information about joining my team please get in contact with me because i would love to give you more information answer any question questions that you might have and um yeah and we would love to welcome you into our beautiful team so there you go i have finished my card um just showing you the difference between the difference in the sentiment label and the embellishments and um, yeah, and you can change it up. But as I said, this is a really easy basic design that you can use any of your stamp sets for. Um, another great one, which was on the same page when I showed this on the catalog actually, is the Forever Blossoms. This would also be perfect for this layout and you can do it in different colors. Um, yeah, choose, choose your color, 
Choose your stamp set. Here's another one as well, Forever Fern. That would also make a beautiful one using the same. You could stamp a, a few of the um, leaves on the front instead of just having one flower. Um, and then stamp some of the other leaves in the background. So lots and lots of different options there for different um, stamp sets. And just change up the colours. And as I said, it's really easy. You've only got three colours there. You've got your base card, you've got your matte card, and then you've got your white that you're going to stamp onto, or you might like to use the very vanilla. So there you go. So really quick, easy, simple card. I hope I gave you lots of tips today as well. I always try and give you tips as I'm going through um, making cards. And especially if you are new to card making or you just like quick and easy cards, this will be a great one for you. So there you go. Oh, thank you, everyone. I'm glad you like my card. Thank you. It turned out beautiful, didn't it? And so quick and easy to do. So there you go. All right. Well, I will flip the camera um, back up so that I can say, say goodbye to you face to face. So just bear with me. I'm going to cover up my camera and I'll flip that up. So just bear with me. It might be a little bit clunky and noisy again while I just flip that up. Got to undo all of my clamps. There we go. All righty. Oh, that's squeaky, isn't it? And let's flip those cameras so that I'm around the right way. There we go. Readjust my lights. And we are all good. There we go. Great. So there's my card. So I'll hold them both up and you can, which bling do you prefer? Tell me which bling do you prefer and which sentiment do you like the pearl, the, wait, which one's that? That's the rhinestones. That's the champagne rhinestones. Or do you like the colored pearls? Which one do you prefer? Pretty same, same, aren't they? Like these, this one I think is more shiny. The bling is more shiny, but yeah, they're both beautiful. <laughs> so thank you all for joining me. Oh, Angela says that she loves both. Oh, thanks, Angela. Um, Deborah said, love this, beautiful. Angela said, beautiful card. Christy said, so lovely. Thank you, everyone. Jill said, I love how that card turned out. Oh, thanks, Jill. Um, Helen said, lovely card, Mandy. Thank you. And Angela said she loves both. Fabulous. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Well, if you make one like this using this layout um, and perhaps a different stamp set, different colors, I'd love to see it. So feel free to send me a private message with the card that you made, or you can even pop it in the comments here as well. Um, oh, Deborah said she likes both as well. So there's a couple of alternatives there for you for sentiments and for bling. And of course, as I said, you can change up the colors and change up the stamp set. So really simple and easy. So there you go. Well, I hope that you all have a fabulous weekend. We're coming up, well, we've got one more day till the weekend. Um, but I hope you all have a fabulous weekend. And um, remember that I'm back live again on Monday at 4 p.m. 4 p.m. I use on Mondays, I usually do um, cards with a little bit more um, intricacy, a little bit more layers and things like that. Although sometimes I change it up and I do quick and easy as well. But Thursdays, I like to try and keep it quick and easy um, for people that are looking for that. So I hope to see you either on Monday or Thursday again. Um, but until then, I hope you all have a great rest of the week and a great weekend. Stay safe and um, keep well. And I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Happy crafting. Bye.